respectable guest, uh, Mr. Abdul uh, Hakir sir, uh, principal of our college, uh, Dr. B. S. Zawri sir, uh, vice principal of science faculty, Dr. Uh, Anil Atre sir, coordinator of the DBT Star College Scheme, uh, Professor Ashish Vani sir, uh, HOD of the department, uh, Professor Sonam sir, departmental coordinator, Dr. Sheikh sir. Um, I, it's my honor to introduce our today's guest, uh, Abdul Kim sir. Um, sir has currently worked as an engineer E, uh, head water resource informatics division and deputy project director for national hydrology project at National Remote Sensing Center, ISRO Hyderabad. Sir has uh, sir is a dedicated and self-motivated professional with more than 25 years of experience in the field of geospatial applications for natural resources mapping, monitoring and management. Sir had completed his Master of Engineering in Resources during Sir also actively um, participated in uh, various uh, organizing different training uh, courses. Uh, with this brief introduction, I welcome Sir uh, for this today's program. Thank you, Sir. Yes, thank you, Sir. Uh, how I wish to guest Abdul Hakim, Sir, to deliver his lecture. But before that, I request to all the uh, attend, uh, attend person kindly on your cameras. We want to take one uh, screenshot for our DBT star record. So I request to all the uh, participants kindly on your cameras for taking one snapshot. And then our today's guest, Hakim sir, will start his presentation. Yes, over to you, Hakim sir. Thank you, Dr. Marusa Sheikh. Uh, I also would like to thank uh, Principal Dr. Zawari Sahib of uh, New Arts Commerce and Science College in Sir Mahmoud Nair. I also would like to thank uh, Dr. Asare, Vice Principal, Professor Ashish Mani, Coordinator of DPD Staff Team, Professor Sonawane, uh, Head of the Department of Electronic Science, and all my friends, students, faculty from New Arts Commerce and Science College, Ahmad Nair. And uh, it's an uh, interesting opportunity for me to be with you and uh, share my knowledge so that uh, some of you or most of you get benefited out of what I'm going to spend with you for next one hour. So I hope I have a time of one hour. Can I, can I take one hour or more than that? Yes, sir. You, you, you can take, sir. No problem. <laughs> okay. okay. I'll, I'll be sharing my screen. Hope my screen is uh, visible and I am audible to all of you. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So my uh, aim of today's uh, interaction with you is to expose you about Indian space program and also give you some examples of how this space technology can be used for day-to-day -day life of you and me. So if I convince you that, okay, space technology is really having any use for me, and I also will be giving you some glimpse of various ISRO organizations, so that you get motivated, you get to know what each one of them is doing, and there you fit once you graduate out of this college. And it's not only for you, your friends, your colleagues, your relatives, whoever you know, you are the ambassadors after this part that you will take this message forward and see that, Entire society gets benefit out of this next one number which we are going to spend. Fine. And so that is the objective of my time that I am going to have. So whenever we talk about Indian space program, we recall Dr. Vikram Ambala Sarabhai. Okay. It's not simply recall, see his photograph when he was born and when he died. We recall his golden words. That is the motto or mission, vision, or whatnot for the organization of Indian space research. 
Okay. So he made the goal very clear in the beginning before ISRO was found mm -hmm. that we are not here to compete with advanced nations. We, we are here to be second to none in application of advanced technologies for addressing real problems of the society. So that is the objective with which entire Indian space program is built upon. Okay. We are not here for space race, rat race. No, we are here to use the technology to benefit the common man, like you and me in the country. Okay, all of you are aware, India is unique in the world, the unique country in terms of everything, whether it is uh, knowledge, human uh, resource, natural resource, diversity, culture, what not. India is unique. Keep that in mind. But with this uniqueness, we have so many challenges. And as Vikram Sarabhas guided us, we are here to use the technology for addressing all these challenges and issues of the country. Okay. So by end of next one hour, you will be convinced that yes, the technology has many such users that directly affects the common man. Okay. So I have uh, made uh, my total presentation in three uh, parts. First part, I will be telling you briefly the journey of ISRO. Then I am going to tell you very briefly what are the different organizations under ISRO. Then I will be giving you some examples, not uh, full examples of what all, what all the things possible using uh, space technology, some examples. So that you get some idea, okay, this how. And I will be sharing this presentation through uh, your uh, uh, college. So you do not take notes. You please hear or listen what I am saying and go, uh, watch the uh, slides. And then I request you to go through the presentation, understand yourself, then start acting on whatever you are understanding. Okay. So the journey of history started in a remote village called Kumba in Thiruvannathapuram in Kerala state in a church. Okay. That's what you are seeing on the screen from this church and big, a big organization was called Indian Space Station Organization, born. And so what is important of this church is, this church is located somewhere near a coastal village and that is uh, found to be appropriate place for testing rockets. Okay, that's how things started. We started testing with uh, small rockets understand the um, issues, criticality, everything. Now we are in a position to launch human being and get him back to the earth safely. So that is the growth over the last 50, 70 years. Okay. And uh, ISRO launched the first rocket somewhere in 1963. 1963, 21st number, the first rocket was launched. Okay. And, uh, before we start building satellite and launching the satellites, we started working on how to use the space technology. So airborne remote sensing started somewhere in the period of 1972 to 1976. It's not that we started building satellite and started launching satellite. We started understanding the use of the technologies only, only for data resources management. Another is through a program called SITE. That is an educational program through communication satellite. That was the first broadcast of education program in the country. Somewhere in 1975-73, the program was done. Once the uh, scientists are convinced that, yes, here is the technology that is useful for the society. Parallelly, a set of scientists were working on building a satellite. The first satellite for Ari Beta was launched on 19th April 1975. That's how it started. Then first Satellite launch vehicle was launched in 1979, SLV-3. When we say SLV-3, it is third uh, launch. That means first the SLV-1 and 2, the matter failed. And the first successful launch happened on 10th August 1979. The SLV-3 is for the smaller payload. As we gain knowledge, we increase the size of the satellite and we also increase the capacity of the launch vehicle to launch better, heavier satellites into space. Okay. Another major milestone I would like to bring to your notice is that uh, happened in 1984 on 2nd April when first 
Indian visited the space through Indo-Soviet manned space mission. All of you are aware, uh, rocket by uh, Wing Commander Rakesh Sharma, he is the first one. Subsequently, India launched its own fully functional operational remote sensing satellite called IRS-1A on March 17, 1988. That is the first remote sensing satellite. I will be telling you in subsequent slides, uh, subsequent slides what is my remote sensing and other type of satellite. Okay. Verily, India also developed the capacity to launch the satellite using our own launch vehicle. So, first successful operational commercial launch vehicle was launched on 29 September 1997. That's called PSLV, Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle. Okay. And until then, we were dependent on other countries like US or France for launching other satellites. Now, India is self sustained. We can launch our own satellites, whatever may be the weight or capacity or type of satellite is there. And you all know we also launched the payload to Moon and Mars. So that's the capability currently we have. Okay. So uh, the journey moved forward. We launched the multiple remote sensing satellites, multiple communication and weather satellites, then we launched one space recovery experiment on January 10th, 2007, where a payload was launched into the space and it was recovered back no. to the Earth. No. Okay. That is the first step in manned mission, so that was also successful. Subsequently, all of you are aware, the first moon mission from India was launched on October 22nd, 2008. The significance of that launch is the yeah, Indian flag was landed on the surface of the moon by India. Indian scientists. Further, we move forward. So, May, during November 20, uh, 2013, we launched another successful mission to Mars. All of you are aware, India is the first country to be successful in uh, uh, launching a successful mission to Mars in first attempt. Okay. Then subsequently, a lot of tests are going on. You, you are all aware, Sunrise 2. Uh, that was launched in 2019, July. It uh, almost uh, had its mission completed except the uh, lander uh, issue. Just saw the mission, even the payload that was launched, the satellites that is uh, capturing the images of moon that was launched in Sanjayan 2 mission, they are still working fine and uh, we uh, get, uh, sending us a lot of uh, images on the moon surface. Okay. And during the last uh, two decades, we started launching athletes of other countries. One such mission was the, where 100 satellites, 100, and, uh, 100 plus satellites of a private company was launched in a single mission. Like this, India has achieved so many in this space. Why don't you me? Okay. Now, having told how the journey of this has overcome, I would like to start with introduction about overall Indian space program. Okay. If you see this slide, on top uh, you have three circles. The first circle says INSAT as or GSAT program. That is Indian Communication Satellite Program. This program is mainly for launching satellites that have capability for communication. This is used for mobile telephony and uh, television and various other communication purposes. Along with that, we also have weather payloads that gives every half an hour pictures of atmosphere over India and its surroundings. So that is the information that is being used by Indian Meteorology Department for providing regular weather updates. That is first program. Second program is called IRS program, that's called Indian Remote Sensing Satellite Program. That's the major uh, program where the natural resources of the country is being monitored by set of satellites that starts the modeling satellite. The third program is called Space Sciences Program, which includes the launches that happen to study other planets in this case, like Moon, Mars, Sun, and other bodies in this case. Okay. All these programs are driven by 
ultimate aim of leading to societal and developmental applications for natural resource management, providing disaster support, and mapping and monitoring for monitoring of infrastructure for the country. So achieve this program, ISRO builds launch vehicles as well as satellites, and 20 of research is behind this in every field of science, engineering, and technology. You define any uh, any branch of science or engineering or technology, you have worked at ISRO. Okay. So uh, this slide is uh, again uh, reiterating what is this Indian uh, space program uh, activities. As briefly told here, major is launch vehicle program, then Indian uh, National Satellite System Communication and Telecommunication Satellite Program, Remote Sensing Program, and uh, Research and Development in Space Science and Technology. ISRO provides service for national space infrastructure to meet the telecommunication needs of the country, not only for government and uh, strategic defense applications, even for private players. These services are being provided like transponder services in different air provided spectrum. We also provide services required for weather forecasting and monitoring. In ISRO is the only thing that provides satellite images that is required for space, science, and technology applications for various purposes and security needs. And ISRO also promotes research and development in space, science, and technology. You being the academic institution, this is where you may be interested in knowing how you can work with ISRO. I will be telling you in the future, in the next few slides. Okay. And this is in a nutshell. Uh, that uh, how many missions ISRO has launched so far? Around 111 spacecraft has been launched. 80 launch missions have happened out of these 12 student satellites. So this is where you have to think whether can we have next student satellite from your college. The two re-entry missions, we have launched 340 plus foreign satellites for around 34 countries. Okay. So this is the profile, overall profile from day one till day. Now what you see on the slide is how the launch vehicle program has grown over time in ISRO. As if you remember when I was talking about the journey of ISRO, I was telling the first successful launch vehicle was SLV-3 that can lift a satellite payload of 40 kgs and over uh, the years it has developed into advanced satellite launch vehicle, then polar satellite launch vehicle, then geosynchronous launch vehicle, Mark 2, and currently Mark 3 is in place. This launch vehicle can take 4,000 kgs of payload or sensor as satellite into the space. Okay. And the altitude, it can go up to 10,000 kilometer. You just see this from 40 kg in low F orbit. When you say low F orbit, it can be 100 kilometers, 800 kilometers. Now we are in a position to take satellites of 4,000 kg, 100 times, but into geosynchronous transfer orbit. When we say geosynchronous transfer orbit, it is something like 10,000 kilometer. The satellite will be placed. Further, it can be taken further high up to 36,000 kilometers above the Earth. Okay, so that's the growth in terms of launch vehicle. Whereas in terms of spacecraft, we have a suit of uh, satellites developed, designed, developed by our own scientists at ISO, on the communication satellite, Earth observation satellites, that's what I'm calling it as emergency satellites, and scientific spacecraft, navigation satellites, that's one of the major programs now currently is being done, is navigational uh, program. So we have a set of navigation satellites, then experimental satellites, small satellites and student satellites. These are the type of satellites that either ISRO builds on its own or help other stakeholders, partner institutions to build like uh, small satellites or student satellites. Okay. And uh, over the years, uh, many communication satellites have been launched, uh, which are built by ISRO. Currently, 16 operation satellites are in the orbit. Okay. All these satellites have more than 200 transponders in various frequencies, C band, XNC band, U band. Each of these frequencies are being used for telecasting, mobile telephony, satellite news gathering, software applications. 
weather forecasting, disaster warning, such and such operations. Please note down here in this satellite, there is one payload called uh, search and rescue uh, 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 payload that can receive signal anywhere on the earth and in, in case of the distress and it can communicate to the control room so that rescue operations can be carried out. So that's a small payload but it has very significant use in this communication satellite. The other major satellite segment is Earth observation satellites. Currently, 13 operation satellites are there. The uh, monitoring the natural resources. The satellites are named in terms of resource sat, auto sat. There are very high resolution satellite images you get from these satellites, and you have all other satellites like RI sat or joint collaborative satellites like Megatrophix, Sarel, and uh, satellites to study not only at the land mass, even to study ocean surface. Okay. And all these satellites, F1000 satellites are being used for different applications covering agriculture, water resources, urban environment, rural environment, mineral targeting, addressing environmental issues, managing the forest resource, forest and ocean, ocean resources and also help in disaster management. Okay. So what I have told so far is a brief overview of ISO space program, Indian space program. Now I will be taking you forward very briefly about different centers because, because of lack of time. I don't want to go in detail. Just give an overview and this uh, slide for the presentation has got the website address of each of the centers. I request you to go through each of them leisurely, understand and see where you fit or where your friends get uh, fit, where your colleagues, your relatives fit in any of the centers with, through which you can make a career out of this after your graduation. So this gives the overall organization structure of the ISRO. Uh, Indian Space Research Organization is under the Department of Space, which is directly under Prime Minister. There is one space commission to guide Department of Space and ISRO for policy related and various other uh, issues. And there are many organizations. Uh, some of them are under Indian Space Research Organization. All the organizations that are under ISRO are core uh, organizations that does the total entire, entire Indian space program, research program. Apart from that, there are uh, so, uh, several autonomous organizations like Physical Research Laboratory, National Atmospheric Research Laboratory, Northeast Space Application Center. All such organizations are doing uh, very in-depth advanced research in specific areas. And we also have commercial arm um, for uh, tapping the technology for commercial purposes within the country as well as across the world in international requirements, to meet the international requirements. Okay. So our central ISRO centers are spread, spread across the country, are concentrated in one particular location in the country. You could see this map. We have, we have our presence everywhere. Okay. I, I request you to go to ISRO website later to better appreciate the, the activities carried by each ISRO center and its uh, relevance. The major center, one of the major centers is Vikram Sarava Space Center. The main uh, area of interest is in rocket research and launch vehicle program. And uh, they take care of everything related to launch phase, design, development, testing, simulation. Okay. The next major center is Professor Yuar Rao Satellite Center. Their main objective is design, development, integration of all types of satellites. They build the satellites. The final payload that goes in to the space using the launch vehicle developed by the other center. Next major center is called Satish Bhavan Space Center. It is located in Sri Harikota, all of you may be aware. That's called Indian Space Port. This is the organization from where the satellites are launched using the launch vehicles. And this center is specialized in handling, integrating, launching the satellites, controlling them during the launch process. Okay. This has got a facility, a huge facility uh, to store the fuels required to integrate, to build. You know, uh, it is one of the huge center of ISRO. 
and you have opportunities to visit nowadays if there is any launch you can also go there and see them live in a designated place next major major center is liquid propulsion system center the main ob uh, objective or the activity of this center is to work on propulsion related engine fuel everything related to the uh, launch week okay they specialize in propulsion system propulsion system required for taking the rocket from ground to the space and it includes everything i'm just telling very briefly if you go into their site, uh, website then you will understand what are the various sub components sub activities that they are carrying out related to liquid propulsion system <coughs> sorry the next ma major center is called space application center this is located in ahmedabad their main activity major activity is to build develop space borne and air borne instruments and payloads in this satellite what is kept is various cameras transponders sensors all those things are developed design and all in this organization they also develop space technical applications for national development and societal benefit so that's the major activity of the center the recent one of the recently formed center is called human space flight center as the name suggests the responsibility is to implement the program of the ganyan that is to uh launch indian into space and safely recover them back to the earth and the works are going on for, at different stages very soon maybe once this current pandemic situation is over we expect to have the uh, unmanned uh, mission and followed by manned mission to the space and back to the earth the national remote sensing center from where i am talking to you is responsible for receiving the satellite images from the indian remote sensing satellite all the indian remote sensing satellite that is launched today so the data the satellite images are being received from around 16 satellites simultaneously and they are processed they are stored and they are given to various users in the country as well as other countries in the world and nrsc national remote sensing is one of the major center which are also demonstrating how the satellite remote sensing technology can be used for various purposes including disaster management natural resource management and good governance we also provide capacity building training for professional academic faculties students and private entrepreneurs so that's our major activity there is another center called isro propulsion complex the major activity of this center is to develop liquid propulsion systems for both satellites as well as satellite launch vehicles so far we have what you have heard is the fuel is required liquid propulsion is required only for launch vehicles but we also need miniaturized propulsion system for satellites for uh, for example to launch uh, the heavy communication satellite from geosynchronous transfer orbit gto of 10000 km to final orbit of 36000 km on board engines are fired fuel is used and the satellite is moved to higher altitude that activity which is very uh, important critical activity in raising the satellite to the final orbit for communication satellite is being carried out by this center and uh, isro telemetry tracking command network is another organization is track which is very critical organization post launch phase this is the uh, center that tracks all the satellite launched by isro through a network of ground stations they have very big antenna in mean, huge antenna they also uh, track not only the satellite that is orbiting around here they also satellite launch uh, i mean they also track the satellites that is launched to other planets and the moon okay and they have a, a very good network across the country in different places they operate everything through net, uh, remote operation and they also have one deep space network for uh, carrying out telemetry tracking and command the telemetry tracking command is day to day activity for each and every satellite so that is very very critical if you don't do this you lose the satellite so that is the critical of this center 
there is one exclusive master control facility because i was telling about the transferring the high heavy communication packets from geo signal transfer orbit to geostationary orbit that needs lot of precise very uh, controlled exercise to be done by firing the on board the engines on satellite an exclusive center called master control facility for taking care of monitoring and controlling the geostationary and geosynchronous satellites of isro so they are in the response for orbit raising in orbit payload testing and on orbit operation once they do everything then they will hand it over to stack for further operations and so for what you to, what i have mentioned the organizations are uh, under indian space organizations now other organizations that comes uh, subsequent flights are autonomous organizations working on various other advanced research activities one such is physical research laboratory located in ahmedabad they take care of research in astronomy astrophysics geosciences solar physics theoretical physics all uh, science related research physical science related research they take care they have observatory in mount abu as well as in udaipur for uh, ground based observation and advanced research in atmospheric sciences we have an exclusive space application center for northeastern regions to cater to the needs of northeast uh, space it carries out all satellite uh, based technology applications equipments uh, everything related uh, including the capacity building for that region so uh, uh, to address the uh, need for that part of the region of in the country they provide complete support we also have one semiconductor laboratory located in uh, chandigarh their main uh, work is uh, in uh, research and development in the area of micro electronics to meet this specific needs they do lot of electronics related activities you can go through their website for more details and uh, indian institute of remote sensing is the one of the primary organization for providing capacity building training for the entire country they have uh, short courses like week uh, one week or few weeks uh, certificate program to mtech courses in remote sensing and jas and uh, they also have collaboration with the uh, international uh, training institute in netherlands in the field of geospatial technology and they also have lot of live and interactive distance learning program providing uh, online training to various uh, academic institutions across the country on remote uh, geospatial technology and various space technology applications one of the uh, newer institute under isro is called indian institute of space science technology space science and technology this offers high quality education at undergraduate graduate and uh, doctoral and post doctoral levels the entry into this uh, institution institution is through uh, qualification in uh, je and uh, the graduates some of the graduates the, those who are graduating from this institute are given placement in isro centers or they have opportunity to go for higher studies Within IAST or in any other academic institutes. Okay. Now, give, ha, having given this uh, brief overview of different organizations, now I would like to take you through some interesting applications using space technology, so that you get some idea of how this space technology is being used to address issues that is very important for the country. Okay. So, as I was telling during the journey of Isro, uh, Isro, the initial application, space application started in the form of uh, using communication satellite for two programs. One is called SAIT, where the teaching happened for 2,400 remote rural villages through televised education programs. Then came one program called STEP, through which Disaster warning systems were provided, especially in terms uh, during cyclone period and various other uh, disaster-related issues. The communication has been provided. These are being done at experimental stage using satellite of 
other countries okay. and the experience out of these two programs site and step led to indian national satellite program that is communication satellite program. similarly it was started playing cameras using aircraft started understanding issues in natural resources in 1971 photographs were taken over coconut farms having infected the root wilt disease and uh, the extent of uh, effect of this disease uh, the criticality of this disease the damage that has happened all their study and uh, they also uh, isro also started uh, playing balloon with uh, sensors and cameras to understand both earth surface as well as atmosphere these programs led to formulation of indian remote sensing satellite program called irs okay now if you come to communication satellite application its canvas is very big i have listed the majority of the applications here like it is mainly used for telecommunications television broadcasting satellite based news gathering that is aurora satellite functional weather forecasting disaster early warning search and rescue operation these are all the primary applications and uh, of late using this big primary application this technology was used for tele education purpose tele medicine purpose as well as some village resource center uh, this is uh, the same uh, application shown pictorially weather forecast we use the daily or uh, half an hourly pictures taken from communication satellite covering india and its uh, hemisphere and uh, this information is spread into the uh, weather models forecast is given nowadays we give for, i mean indian metal department uses this data to provide forecast uh, at that instant that's called nowcast or 24 hours to uh, 72 hours forecast advanced forecast is also being given and tele education program is being widely used now um, of late because of all the internet everyone is doing this telegation before this internet came the satellite was the only medium through which uh, the education program uh, was broadcasted in uh, various uh, schools and many remote villages within the main landmass of india as well as in uh, uh, islands like andaman nicobar were provided medi medicines uh, medi med med telemedicine consultation by Uh, connecting the remote areas using communication satellites the experts sitting at uh, super special the hospitals were able to treat the patients in the remote location without they being traveling all the way to the hospital similar way village resource centers were formed through which many remote villages were given skill development program training orientation agriculture advisory programs using satellite communication technology and as i was telling initially the payload on board communication satellites are used be, being used for search and rescue operations especially those vessels traveling across the sea different locations if they are located in remote place and they are in distress due to different reasons they can send the, the signal and that signal is captured by these these satellites and uh, it, uh, it is uh, transmitted to the receiving station where 24 by 7 monitoring control mechanism is there and it gets alerted and necessary rescue operations are carried out wherever any distress signal is coming out satellite navigation is another major program uh, of isro i mean where the satellites are being used to position i in the your position like we have been using global positioning system satellites of uh, us or uh, navy where uh, as a strategic purpose tomorrow if those signals are not available for us it is better to have our own set of satellite system that can use for navigation and purpose so that led to the satellite navigation program of isro we have around uh, seven sat eight satellites in the orbit through which you can identify your position on the earth surface okay and uh, this technology navigation technology is also being used by airport authority of india for precise autopilot landing of all the aircraft in indian airports so this how uh, the set of eight satellites uh, on board 
out of this one satellite, uh, spare satellite, and the position on the Earth is determined by knowing the specific high accurate position of all these satellites that is orbiting the Earth in a predefined orbit. So based on uh, the principles of geometry, you can e more precisely identify your location having known the location of all these satellites. That is the principle in which this public works. This is the um, uh, program Gagan, which I was telling that is being used by Airport Authority of India to know the precise location of aircraft so that the autopilot landing can happen to the accuracy of less than few centimeters accuracy. Okay. Again, the communication satellites and the navigation satellites are being used for improved position accuracy of the aircraft that helps in better approach to the airport and land, safe landing. Space science and exploration is another major area. As you are aware, many studies, advanced research studies have been carried out using AstroSat, Mars Orbital Mission, payloads in Chandrayaan 1 and pay, uh, advanced payloads in Chandrayaan 2. These payloads were useful in, for example, if you take case of the payload in Chandray 1, it could give conclusive evidence of presence of water molecule, hydraulic mo molecules on the moon surface and the uh, terrain mapping camera on board Chandray 1 and 2 has given three-dimensional view of moon surface which was not available earlier. And this is the kind of applications that has been being uh, used. And uh, Ostrosat has been used for studying the X-rays, optical and UAV spectral bands of the atmosphere, uh, about the uh, space, the sun rays, solar rays, all those things being done. And the data sets are available in public domain. There are uh, Indian uh, ISRO's website for the science mission, they on a separate uh, portal where you can uh, access the data from these missions and do research on your own. Earth observation application is one of the major applications of ISRO, Indian Space Research Program. Uh, and uh, the four major areas where it is being used is in governance, for disaster management, for socio-economic security, security of the society, and sustainable development. When you say social economic security of, uh, security of the country, it is being used for food security, water security, energy security, health security, shelter, infrastructure, and information security. Okay. And in governance, day-to-day -day basis or uh, on regular basis, the technology is being used for planning, monitoring, evaluation of governmental program, development program, and provide decision support system to governance, both at the central and state government level. We also use this satellite technology for sustainable development, for impact assessment, environmental impact assessment, conservation of bioresources, climate change studies, long-term data, Indian ISO, geosphere, biosphere program, for all these purposes, satellite removing technology being used. Under disaster support management, we also provide information from satellites at different phases of disaster, either at preparation level or early warning, once a disaster happens, during the response phase and post disaster phase for recovery purpose, mitigation purpose also, we provide technological support using the motion satellite. Okay. So I'll be taking you through all the examples now uh, about how the remote sensing satellites are being used. For example, the entire country, how the land is being put into different use and what are the land covers, whether it is agricultural land or forest land or barren land, what type of land, this kind of information is being generated at different uh, level of detail, like uh, some information is generated every year using a set of sensors called uh, advanced wild field sensor, some information, some detailed information is generated once in five years and even further uh, village level information is sent, uh, uh, generated about land is sent to us once in 10 years. And we also generate information about the wastelands in the country. And by having generating this information, the government agencies are using uh, this kind of information to convert wastelands into useful information. If you see in this slide, bottom right, you see 
time period, a particular location uh, in the country where it was lying unused as a wasteland. Now the state government has used this for constructing solar power. Okay. Otherwise, this land is of no use. That means they are not having fertility, not be used for agriculture. They don't have water resources. So they don't have other infrastructure access of those things. Whereas this kind of area, which will be very cheap, can be used for installing solar power panels. Okay. So this is one. I'm just giving only one example in each, so that you will appreciate how the remote sensing technology is being used. The remote sensing technology is also being used for watershed development. You know the uh, rainfall that falls on the earth surface, it gets collected based on the time and uh, uh, goes out from a single point that is called watershed and most of the development program of the country uh, that is uh, directly affecting society that means uh, village population or uh, district population are being implemented at watershed scale. The remote sensing technology being used to monitor the programs. Once a program is implemented, money is spent by government for a specific purpose, whether that purpose is achieved or not, is being monitored using time series status images. And uh, all of you are aware the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme under which uh, many activities are being carried out at village level with huge funding from central ministry. Uh, the whatever money spent, uh, we are providing technology support to map them, monitor them and uh, take decision for subsequent funding under this program. Uh, other, this without the technology help would not have been possible to do conventionally to collect this information. The amount of information that is getting generated is unimaginable. On daily basis, crores of information comes to this portal and uh, that is accessible immediately by the decision makers in the government department. The remote sensing program has uh, significant use in agriculture related for monitoring the crops grown in the, in the country in very uh, near real time to know how much area is grown, area of crop is grown under different uh, crop varieties, what is their health condition. Now we have grown to a stage where based on remote sensing images the crop insurance scheme is being uh, implemented to decide what is the premium to be collected and also to decide what is the uh, the in, in, in case of crop loss how it has to be compensated okay the insurance compensation also happens based on information that comes from the monitoring athletes okay and uh, under water resources remote sensing technology has been widely used we can talk about this benefit um, Maybe a week long program, we can have so much applications have been done. But to be specifically to, uh, to make us appreciate how significant it is, I will give one example that uh, you can see in this slide where the snowfall that is occurring in the Himalayas, I can monitor sitting in Hyderabad. Not only the snow snowfall that is happening within the country, the snowfall that is happening beyond Indian boundaries. If you see this image, the map that is shown in left side, more than two thirds of area is falling outside the country. The Himalayan region, some of them are in Pakistan, some of them are in China, some of them in Nepal, Bhutan, all Himalayan countries. And the snow melt that is happening during summer season, the snowfall that is um, getting melted during summer season, comes as a water into the rivers of Indus, Ganga and Brahmaputra, they are going into India. So for better water management, I should know every summer season how much water is going to get. So uh, model this, you need information about the status of snow, its extent, its condition. So that's where the remote sensing technology is used. So remote sensing technology by its terms that without going into the location where you want to know about that location, you can get the information by sitting in your place. So that is the remote sensing technology. Okay. So uh, remote sensing technology also is being widely used to monitor the forest ecosystem in the country, 
to monitor the change in forest area not only that we also use technology to map and monitor forest fire that happened across the country mostly in summer due to natural and man made action the forest fire happens it, uh, this information is very critical for forest managers to put out the fire and control it which otherwise if left unattended leads to lot of damages to the natural resources of the forest okay that is very critical information that being provided in real time basis using satellite motion and other technologies we also provide technology support for urban related studies for preparing very high scale map that is used for planning purpose for generation of master plan for major cities in the country almost 4000 plus cities the uh, information is being generated using very high resolution satellite images either it's from indian satellite or other foreign satellites this kind of large scale information being generated and the other long term satellite images are also being used to see how the urban is getting developed over time if you see the right side the animated picture that shows how the delhi urban area has increased over time it, it also it just not only gives the aerial extent it gives the uh, direction at which the city is growing this information available for most of the major cities in the country so all this all this information generated is possible only because of remote sensing technology that is available because the remote sensing technology not only gives what is seen on the surface it also uh, gives uh, what is beneath the surface the ground water availability for the entire country is mapped using satellite remote sensing sensor uh, using satellite remote uh, technology and we have the information available in uh, uh, public domain where you can see for any given area if you drill a well what is the probability of getting ground water in that area so the information is available up to that extent and not only that remote sensing images are also being used to identify availability of different minerals like diamond gold manganese phosphate using remote sensing technologies and uh, isro is providing technical support to various organizations like nmdc and moi and we also again there is uh, no end to this we also monitor fire that is happening inside the coal mine inside means it is under the coal coal mine which is not seen from surface but there are technologies to map those fire underground fire and we provide real time technology support using geospatial technologies for handling various natural disasters in the country we provide information on regular basis for flood uh, drought landslide earthquake and all other natural disasters using satellite technology So I was telling that it is an uh, example to show the uh, real-time forest fire alert system. So the information is given in the form of map. It is also sent as a SMS to the forest officials in daily basis once the satellite images are available. So we also map uh, the landslide and its effect with wherever the uh, event happens in the country, whether it is in uh, Western Ghats, Eastern Ghats, Himalayas, Northeastern Himalayas. Okay. Now you must be wondering where all these informations are available. What I have told in last ten slides or so that I have listed are so many remote sensing applications, and uh, it is not available in our computers. It is also available for you to see. That's called Bhuvan. We have an Indian geo platform where you can see all these satellite images, the information that was generated on natural resources disaster, is all available in this one. Particular portal, the Sal Bhuvan Geo Portal. This is how its uh, uh, homepage looks. The various applications developed using Web GIS program is, are available under this portal. It is categorized under different teams or different applications, like whether it is e-governance application, tourism related application, or urban related application. They are all categorized 
the website address is given in this slide, which I will be sharing with you. You can go through this portal. You have the information. You can use the information. You can create, add your own information, generate uh, value-added information using the tools available in this portal. Okay, these are the different services, map services, and open JS consortium services available in this portal that can be used either in your web application or in your desktop application for adding further content and making use for various applications that I have listed out in last 10 to 15 slides. Okay. And we also developed many applications for central and state government departments and special applications like for election commission. During COVID time also we have uh, developed a lot of applications that help in uh, managing the COVID situation for the country, for the state, based on the problem. Okay. And uh, the uniqueness of this portal is you have consistent one matching satellite image at different time periods. You must be wondering how this is different from Google Images. Google Images, you don't have information for entire country, for any part of the uh, country, India. Uh, wherever some satellite companies are acquiring images, any cities or any particular lo uh, location, those images only get into Google Images, whereas in one geo platform for entire country, uniformly corrected, high accurate images are available. So one such image that I am showing here in your screen belongs to a part of Ahmad Nagar town, correct? If you can, some of you can identify, this is the area where your college is located. You can see a, a plain area, I am just putting my mouse here, this is the ground, playground of your institution. Okay. You must be wondering, fine, this I also know, I am going to this college day in and day out. I know what is there, this is the this road, this is this road, this is how I approach, these are the buildings, there are agricultural fields, fine. But can you know how it was before you were born? Okay, that's where remote sense technology comes into picture. You see, the, uh, there are GS technologies. You can add information over to the satellite remote sensing images. But to see how it looked earlier, you see this image of 1978. This is how the environment in this part of Amadar was looking like. You still see same uh, fields, same river, same major road, but very few buildings. Okay, so you go through the Bowen portal, just enjoy how your city and its environment and the entire country has changed over time. With this, I conclude my talk. My email address is on your screen. You can always mail me for any information that you need on Indian Space Research Program or anything related to the National Remote Sensing Center. With this, I conclude my uh, speech. I thank uh, the management of uh, New Arts and Science College for giving me this opportunity and specifically Dr. Mudhan Sheikh for connecting me to uh, this college and giving me an opportunity to interact with you and uh, share my knowledge. Thank you all and uh, over to you for any queries, questions. Thank you. Yes, thank you, thank you, sir. Student, if you have any query, you can ask to sir. If anyone have any query. Yes, definitely, so, sir. Students have a lot of query. I know you will have a lot of questions. Somebody has to start first question, then only the rest will follow. Correct. Uh, so don't worry. If you are hesitating to ask now, you can always send mail to me. Because without asking, you don't get what you want. If you want some information, you have to ask. You know. Yes. And the newborn child, they try to get milk. Otherwise, don't know. The information doesn't come to you. You have to go to the information. Make a habit of asking questions. You. Yeah, you uh, tell yourself that today I will ask one question from one lecturer uh, on daily basis. Then only you will get to know. And don't 
ever hesitate to ask question you may be thinking it is a silly question but it will be very important question your professor your lecturer will appreciate you for the question because the question the kind of doubt you have every one of your friends will be having their mind so make it a habit of asking question you know the time is not lost if you have any question you can ask yes. or you can write to me yes yes the yeah, first question has come from uh, kavita after msc how it came down yes lot of opportunities for science graduates after msc isro recruits students with uh, post graduate in science program physics chemistry what not see the opportunities are all over in national research center physical research laboratory and we also has uh, you also have opportunity in space physics laboratory of vikram sarava space center i i advise you to go through this this three centers to know more about what kind of activity they do in in uh, science related activities and definitely you have scope opportunities to join in this organization we have colleagues uh, of lemsi uh, in my organization many many of the scientists working in physical research laboratory is they are all from uh, science background as well as space physics laboratory and you have people from science background working in space uh, port of india sri harikota as well okay and the next question is there how can we independently work on these applications as a remote sensing student yes very good question as i told visit bhuvan uh, geo platform where you have plenty of satellite data available not only in bhuvan there are many open source satellites available in the world from different satellites not only indian remote satellite we have another portal called bhuvan nidhi where you can uh, download free satellite data you need purchase a satellite free satellite data from american satellites you can download you just google it american remote sensing satellite free download there is one uh, portal there are portal from european remote sensing satellite sentinel uh, satellite data can be downloaded okay that is data then how to uh, analyze the data there are many open source uh, tools available one uh, such tool is called quantum gis qgis portal that is being used widely by many people for, for analyzing the satellite images even my i myself we i use the qgis for, uh, software for doing any uh, remote sensing analysis and you must be wondering how uh, to know of how to use the data even i was uh, not trained on using qgis what i do go to google i say i want to do geometry recreation satellite images using qgis i get 10 results i go through all the 10 results understand do myself so self learning is the best learning if you want any doubts uh, guidance you can approach your uh, professors faculty teacher or you can approach people like us in isro in rs yeah you know question see yes. while asking question you are not only helping yourself you are helping your friends who are watching here yeah the information i and i answer to your question is going to be helpful for your friends okay how issue you may be having lot of questions in your mind you must be wondering which one to ask so you can write down send to us send to me or send to dr mother sir or you are uh, head of the division anybody you can discuss with them every one of us will are there to help you out yes sure sir. so uh, definitely sir uh, we are interested to the student and we we are uh, like very fortunate that now student also understand this is interdisciplinary thing uh, sir before that i have one more question from sharif uh, you, if you can give us sir yeah, is so higher geomatic engineers why not so many opportunities are available for geomatic people either at national remote sensing center space application center Indian Institute of Space, Indian Institute of Remote Sensing, there are done North East Space Application Center. These are the major centers where you have the uh, career opportunities in the field of geomatics. Okay, you go to their website, you will come to know many things. 
about how geoinformatics engineers can work in this organization. And uh, soon you'll be having uh, the advertisements coming out of these institutions, maybe after uh, six months. So the recruitment happens uh, every three years because people get uh, retired. So the recruitment of career opportunities is there. You can go to my ISRO website, isro.gov.in, or the individual organization website to know the career opportunities out there. This is another question. How can we cross check our work associated with these applications and improve ourselves? Likewise, involving in a project like land use, land cover. Yeah, it's a good question. NRSC, National Emergency Center, and other uh, ISO centers encourages helping the students in carrying out that postgraduate project, project work, postgraduate project work, like MSc or MTech, in any ISO center which is having relevant activities going on. Now due to pandemic currently we are not taking, hopefully forthcoming year, academic year, things get uh, normalized. You can always approach NRSC or any other organization like Space Application Center, Indian Institute of Remote Sensing, any of the NSAC or carrying out your academic project activities uh -huh. through your faculties also. You can download the data, the thematic information, uh, from bone portal or the various other portal that is providing this information, do the project work at your own college with the help of your faculty. You can also get in touch with the scientists available at different ISRO centers. Any ISRO center, you write to the mail available in that website address. They will guide you how to go about. So never have, never hesitate to contact any of the officials in the ISRO. They are not uh, aliens from other uh, planets. They are also human beings like you. They are there to help you. Yes, I think, sir, students start thinking. <laughs> it's good. Yes. And definitely yeah. I want to highlight one thing. During my PhD time also, uh, I approached to ISRO, and even Hakim sir is also giving me some contact of scientists. So no doubt, students, uh, the people from ISRO are very cooperative. You just start working in your field and definitely the future is there. So with the formal program, now I shifted toward the uh, vote of thanks. So now Hello. I request to our professor. Uh, Hello. Yes. Uh, sir, I am Naomani Mal from Institute of Remote Sensing, Anna University. Yes, madam. Yeah, uh, I'm working as assistant professor. I'm teaching the students. Just I want to know about yes, the, uh, just attended the your program. Uh, I yes. want to know about that NISAC or uh, our ISRO centers. I don't know about yes. the other sides of ISRO. Today I learned so many other sides of uh, space applications. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I need your PowerPoint that I can share to my students also. Sure, madam, you can uh, message your email address in the chat window. I will uh, share it with you. Yes, sir. I note a note. Thank you so much, sir. It is, I yes. learned so much yeah, today. Welcome. welcome. Uh, Thank you.